This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and we recently reviewed the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro 13, and I, I asked if you want a comparison with the Microsoft Surface Pro 4, and you said yes, so here it is. All right, two lovely pieces of hardware here. How do you decide? First off, I, I know some of you watched the Mobile Studio Pro review, and you're like, wow, what a retarded, weirdo, ugly piece of hardware, because you like to watch all of our videos, and that's great. Keep doing that, even if product's kind of vertical market, which this is, and not for you. But that is the first telling part right there. Not that this is ugly or unergonomic, because actually it's not. It's perfect for what it's designed to be. But this is the mainstream product right here. Microsoft Surface Pro 4 is a portable PC that happens to do art on the side. It comes with a pen. Intrigue pen right here, literally on the side, fits magnetically, comes in the box with it. But its primary job in life is to be a really cool looking Windows tablet, uh, you know, for surfing the web, playing videos, and to be a PC stand-in. You got the keyboard over here. That's a, you, know, you pay extra for the accessory. It's about a hundred bucks or so adds on, but it's a laptop-like experience. The Wacom Mobile Studio Pro, available in 13 and 16 inch sizes, so that's another thing we'll get into, the size differences here. Uh, this is designed primarily for professional artists, or those who wish to be professional artists, or for serious hobbyists who have the money to afford it. It's not designed to be something that you use like a laptop per se, though you can. It has a full Windows PC in here, in fact a more powerful one than what's in Surface Pro 4, but this is designed to be like a drawing tablet, right? You see that right there? That's a Looks like a big Wacom drawing tablet, doesn't it? So ergonomically speaking, this is not ideal as a laptop. So if you're a student, even, you know, if you're a graduate student, certainly going to art school or your upperclassmen in art school, this might be the better choice because it's the better drawing tool. But if you're just starting out in school or you're not sure if you want to do art for sure, or maybe you're just doing CAD where you need to do some drawings, but you're not really doing fine artwork. Well, obviously this is the more general purpose product. This is a kind of odd thing to take to class unless you are in art school and other people say, oh, you have one. That's cool. I want one too. Or yeah, I have one as well. You get the idea. Now, both of these work with keyboards at like a in either case, you're going to have to pay extra for them. The Surface has the magnetic detachable keyboard backlit. Very nice. Wacom sells a Bluetooth keyboard of their own. You can use any Bluetooth keyboard if you want. So either way, you're going to have to add in a keyboard. But obviously, again, this one is the more, you know, you just close this up, do this, take it around with you. Wow, what a teeny little nice laptop you have. With this, you're carrying around these parts right here. So different kind of use case. Now I mentioned screen size, 12.3 inches for the Surface Pro 4, and the Wacom is available in either a 13 or a 16 inch size, which is 13.3 or 15.6 inches. So when you're doing artwork, bigger is better, I have to say. My time with the Surface Studio, for example, oh, it's really hard to go back to, honestly, either of these products. It's easier to draw. It's easier if you're doing photo editing, too. I mean, I think most of you out there who are doing photography professionally, and even I do that. I do all the photography for our site, the product photography and stuff like that. I prefer working on a 27-inch monitor if possible, but I can make do with less. But certainly, the bigger, the better. So you can see more of the picture when you're editing. You don't have to zoom in so much, especially with today's high-resolution photos. So that makes a difference. So a little bit of a win here because you have bigger size options, and particularly going up to the 15.6-inch model is just luxurious. But this comes at a price, and on average, the we're talking about the 13-inch, because right now it's the closest in size to this. On average, the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro is about $500 more. That makes a big difference, whether you're a student, a professional artist, a hobby artist, anything like that. A bit less if you're a professional and you're lucky enough to have your company buy these for you, sure. But if you have to do it yourself, I mean, everybody knows the starving artist, right? You, you, it's hard if you're a freelancer and trying to make a living doing that. And hopefully you get some gigs that can actually pay for this. But it's an expensive purchase. I would say in the end, it's going to be worth it for those of you who are digital artists. Now, if you're a photographer, I might actually lean towards the Surface Pro 4, other than the smaller screen size being a bit limiting there because it's a brighter screen. The Intrigue pen on a Surface Pro 4 is perfectly adequate. It's precise enough for that kind of editing, whether you're doing pressure sensitive corrections or selections, that sort of thing. Wacom Mobile Studio Pro is nice for those of you who are doing photography for print though, because it has a higher gamut display for starters. And the pen is, well, more precise as well. But like I said, for photography, it yeah, matters a little bit less. And if you're doing stuff for the web, the, the Surface Pro 4 can be fine with sRGB gamut. 
again, but if you're going for professional stuff, full, getting closer to full Adobe RGB on the Wacom can be a plus, plus the larger working sizes. Now the Wacom has more horsepower inside. Both of these are dual core machines, but the Surface Pro 4 has your standard 15 watt Ultrabook dual core CPUs, whereas you're getting 28 watt CPUs on the Wacom. So that's like what's used in the more expensive 13 inch MacBook Pro. Not many products have that tweener CPU that's between the Ultrabook 15 watt CPU and the quad core 45 watt CPU. And it is noticeable if you're using doing complex work. If you've got 40 layers going and you're using one of Photoshop's mixer brushes, for example, you'll notice the increased performance of not just having the 28 watt CPU, but also Intel Iris 550 graphics on board on the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro 13 inch. Now you can get it with Quadro M1000M NVIDIA graphics on the 16 inch size, but honestly, that for programs that are optimized for the Quadro, it can help, but the Quadro is not that much more powerful than the Iris 550, which is a pretty strong one. And if you're using ZBrush, for example, and you're actually trying to do some 3D work here, the Iris 550 and the NVIDIA option is going to help a lot more for those of you who are actually doing some 3D work. You can do that in Surface Pro 4, but it's just, you know, it's not a mobile workstation exactly either. It's not going to be as fast. All right, what about art, right? That's what really this is about for most of you watching this for the Mobile Studio Pro part of it. And here's the neat thing. They fixed the parallax. If you watch my review of this, you'll know that finally you don't have the offset of where the pen tip is versus the screen. Of course, both of these are full Windows PCs. They can run any Windows program you want. Photoshop, Corel Painter 2017, ZBrush, all that sort of thing. But when the Achilles heel of Wacom EMR was Parallax, now I'm right there tapping on the menu and it's no longer impossible to actually reach the menus accurately and use the selections over here. Woohoo! Even better yet, when I'm painting, oh, let's just ruin this painting right here. My cursor is where I expect it to be. It's not offset. Particularly as a left-handed person, the parallax just kind of drove me away from Wacom EMR after using it for years because, I don't know, it's even more exacerbated. Probably tilt the pen a little bit more, do whatever that is. Now really usable. Surface Pro 4 uses Entrig technology. Really, there's no parallax, so you got perfect accuracy on the corner, all that sort of thing. One thing you don't have, though, tilt support for the pen. I really like tilt support. That's why I like the iPad Pro, and I like Wacom EMR, because when you're doing things like shading and you want to come in at an angle and try to get something nuanced, it doesn't really matter whether you're going full on. In fact, if you tilt too far, it won't be able to read the pen tip anymore. So negative for Surface Pro 4, there no tilt support. Difference in pressure levels, well, Wacom's gone off the chart, 8,192 levels versus 1024 for your Surface Pro 4. Does that, is that necessary, 8,000 levels? No, probably not, but it's great marketing. I'd say anything 1,000 and above is going to be good, but the pressure curves on entry typically are still not fantastic. The way they have, no matter how much you feel with the settings, it's just that when you go from a light line to a heavy line, there's not as much granular control over what you're doing there. It's usable and people do great artwork with it and I've done some nice sketches and stuff with it too. It's just not like all, all there. With, with the Wacom, it's sort of like you're using that favorite pencil or brush that you have. It just feels right because you've got really nice pressure curves here. The initial activation force here is so light and I have a light touch that I actually had to adjust it to to, to change it because it was even lighter than I needed. It's just precise too. The digitizer grid, it has more points on it to be very, very precise. This is the apex of drawing. That's what makes it the professional studio choice oftentimes enough. It's almost not fair to expect that from Surface Pro 4 because it's at really at first intent trying to be a consumer laptop replacement kind of product that also lets you do some art. Again, you can do fine artwork on the Surface Pro 4 too, but it just all hangs together so much better here between the excellent pressure curves, the really, really wonderful precision on this and the light initial activation force that's required to paint so you can be a light touch artist and really get your work done. And speaking of products that just kind of remind me of that favorite pencil or something like that when you're painting or drawing, the iPad Pro also comes pretty close when it, when it comes to that. So if you're interested in a comparison between the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro and the iPad Pro, shout out in the comments and let me know. How about battery life and associated things? Well, you would think, dun, 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 dun. this big charger here, this bigger machine would have better battery life. No, little David here is not going to be that, is going to be a little Goliath because, or big Goliath, teeny charger, 
bigger charger. And that has to do really with powering the, the more powerful internals inside here. The Surface Pro 4, six, seven hours, about on average for most people, moderate use. The Wacom Mobile Studio Pro, four hours. Yeah. So there you have it. Wacom Mobile Studio Pro versus Microsoft Surface Pro 4. And first and foremost, clearly, the Surface Pro 4 is a laptop sort of thing that you can take anywhere. It's easy, it's light, it has a keyboard that attaches. If you pay a little extra money for that keyboard, sure, yeah, it makes it a clamshell kind of thing. You get the idea. It's your general purpose laptop that happens to be good for art too on the side. The Wacom Mobile Studio Pro is purpose built for art. It looks like a tablet that sits on your desk because that's primarily what it's supposed to be. Sure, you can prop it up on the stand, but is it a kind of thing that you're going to pick up and carry to class? If you're attending RISD or some art school, yes, you might, but otherwise for most people who are doing art as a hobby, who are small budget, just starting out doing comics, you probably can't afford, you know better than me, your budget, but you probably can't afford to have both the fairly expensive Mobile Studio Pro and something that is a laptop too. So there you have it. One is really more for people who have the money to spend and are doing it professionally. The other is a general purpose product that happens to have a nice little side gig as an art tool. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and Thumbs up if you like this review.